Hello, my name is Craig Ashapa. I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Computing Systems Product Group focusing on storage technologies. This video will demonstrate the power, configurability, and manageability of the UCS S Series 3260 combined with UCS Manager and Storage Profiles. I'll first provide a brief introduction to the S Series 3260 platform in UCS Manager Storage Profiles, and then we'll demonstrate managing and provisioning storage on the S Series 3260 platform utilizing UCS Manager. The UCS S3260 is a 4U standard rack depth chassis offering up to two server nodes based on Intel V4 CPUs with optional onboard NVMe drives. 56 hot swappable top load HDD SSD drive slots with drive capacities up to 10 terabytes per drive. Four additional rear load SSD slots, dual system I.O. controllers featuring Cisco VIC technology providing 160 gigabit aggregate bandwidth, storage controllers based on the LSI 3316 chipset, in optional second node drive expansion or PCIe expansion modules. The UCS S3260 provides configuration flexibility with dual server node, single server node, single server node with IO expansion module, or single server node with disk expander offerings. The UCS S3260 is fully manageable through UCS Manager 3.1.2 and above. UCS Manager brings all the advantages of inventory, compute and storage configuration, pools, policies, profiles, templates, virtual NICs and VHBAs, and much more. UCS Storage Profiles takes legacy local disk configuration to the next level. In the past, to configure the initial RAID groups and disk geometry in order to prepare a system for operating system installation, one would boot into the system BIOS and enter the storage controller configuration utility at the appropriate point in the boot sequence. In the configuration utility, the disks would be configured into their appropriate RAID groups and virtual drives, LUNs, created on the RAID groups accordingly. The configuration would then be saved in the operating system loader onto the appropriate disks. Once in production, modifying the disk geometry would either involve repeating this process or utilizing storage controller utilities within the operating system on a system-by-system -system basis. With the introduction of UCS storage profiles, RAID groups and LUNs are configurable within UCS Manager and consumed by UCS Manager service profiles, templates, and policies. Simple to advanced storage profiles can be built utilizing user-specified disk types and quantities, RAID levels, and LUN sizes. Storage profiles can be applied to a single or to multiple systems with configurations being applied instantly or staged. Storage profiles are dynamic, allowing additions and modifications without necessitating system reboots. UCS Storage Profiles – Powerful, Flexible, and Configurable Local Storage Management Let's go ahead and demonstrate the power of the S3260 server along with UCSM Storage Profiles. Within the diagram here, you'll see I have 10 boxes that are referred to as chassis. The S3260 server within UCSM is referred to as a chassis. So if I click on chassis and expand it and go to chassis 1, you'll see the physical display of the chassis appears. Now if I go over here and I click on storage, I can go ahead and take a look at what disks are actually in this particular chassis. I scroll down. Right now, it's fully populated with 56 top load drives. Now, if I expand chassis and I go into servers, expand servers, I'll see this particular chassis contains two server nodes, server one and server two. Clicking on server one, it shows me that server one is the top server node within the chassis. And if I go to inventory, I can see all the information that's managed within UCSM for this particular chassis. If I click on storage, I'll see that my controller is a Cisco 12 gigabit RAID controller for UCS 3260. And if I go to disks, you see at the moment, I only have two disks assigned. These two disks are the rear SSD disks that are primarily utilized for boot. Later on in the video, I will assign the disks to the each one of the server nodes, which will then populate the inventory with the correct number of disks. The first thing we need to do in order to prepare the S3260 chassis for consumption within UCSM is to go over here to the chassis icon, and we need to go ahead and create what's called a chassis profile. Now, the chassis profile includes two primary components. It includes the chassis firmware package, which defines what firmware level will be applied to the actual 3260 chassis, and a disk zoning policy which will define which disks are assigned to which server nodes within the chassis and which disks are global hot spares. Let's go ahead and create the chassis firmware package real quick. Click Add. We'll call this CFP1. 
We're going to set the chassis package as 3.1.2bc, which I'm running on this particular domain, and hit OK. That was created. I'm going to go over to my disk zoning policies. I'm going to click to add a new one here. I'm going to call this one DZP1, or disk zoning policy 1. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and assign my disks. So I'm going to hit dedicated, assign to server 1, controller 1, and here I'm going to do 1 to 27. Disk 1 to 27 will be assigned to server 1. I'm going to hit OK. And then go ahead and add my server 2, so dedicated server 2, controller 1. I'm going to do disks 28 to 54. Hit OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some chassis global hot spares. And I'll create disks 55 to 56 as chassis global hot spares. Hit OK. Now we can see here all the disks that I went ahead and assigned to each server, disk 1 through 27 to server node 1, and then 28 to 54, server node 2, and the last two just the chassis global hot spares. Hit OK. So now I have my chassis firmware package and my disk zoning policies created. Now I have a chassis profile template. This will make things easier because it allows me to reutilize this over and over again for multiple chassis. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go ahead and assign my chassis firmware package that I created, CFP1, and my disk zoning policy, which is DZP1, which I've already assigned previously. So let's create the chassis profile from the chassis profile template we just created. Let's right click that, create chassis profile from template. Let's give it a name of a CP for chassis profile. Number of instances 10 to correspond to the 10 S3260 chassis I have in this UCS domain. Hit OK. These will automatically go and get created. Now what we need to do is associate this chassis profile to a specific S3260 chassis. So right click it, change chassis profile association. I'm going to select an existing chassis and I'm going to go ahead and click 1 to correspond with CP1. Hit OK. This will go ahead and apply the firmware to that particular chassis as well as the disk zoning policy which will assign the disks to each one of the server nodes in this chassis as well as the chassis hot spares. I've gone ahead and assigned all the chassis profiles to their corresponding S3260 chassis. Now let's go back over to the equipment tab and revisit the chassis that we looked at before, chassis 1. If I look at server 1, storage disks under the inventory tab, expand storage controller, you see Disk 1 through 27 corresponding to the disk zoning policy that they created within the chassis policy have been assigned to server 1. Server 2, you'll see disks 28 through 54 have been assigned to the server node. So the disks that we assigned in the disk zoning policy as part of the chassis profile in the previous step have now been assigned to their corresponding servers. So let's move over to the storage drawer over here to create our storage profiles. Storage profiles define both the disk group policies, which are how you define your RAID groups, which RAID level, how many disks are going to be in that RAID group, what type of disk, whether they're hard drives or SSDs. Once the disk group policies are created, you go ahead and create the storage profiles, which are the LUNs, which are created on top of those disk group policies. So let's go ahead and create a couple of disk group policies. I'm going to create this as a one disk RAID 0. I'm going to choose RAID 0 over here, create one disk, make that a hard drive, hit OK. Add some more, let's do a RAID 1, two disk, keep that RAID level, RAID 1 mirrored, two drives, I'm going to create this as an SSD, this is going to be my boot drive, hit OK. Let's create an eight disk RAID 10. RAID level, RAID 10, 8, make those hard drives, OK. And I'm going to create a 4 disk RAID 5. I'm 
hard drive, hit OK. So now here are the four RAID groups that I've created. Now what I want to do is I want to create a storage profile utilizing these RAID groups. So go over to Storage Profiles. I'm going to hit Create Storage Profile. I'm going to call this Storage P1 for Storage Profile 1. I'm going to click Add for Local LUN. My boot drive, give it a name of boot. I'm going to go ahead and hit Expand to Available. This will use all the available space on the RAID group I'm going to select. This group configuration, I'm going to use the, the two disk grade one. So this will utilize all the space on this two disk grade one. Hit OK. Let's create a data one. Let's create this as 1000 gigabyte. Let's put this on the eight disk grade 10. Hit OK. Let's create a couple more. Data two. Make this 500 gigabyte. Put this on the RAID, on RAID 5 for disk. OK. Create a data 3. Let's put it on the same RAID 5. You can have multiple LUNs within the same RAID group. Let's create one more called logs. Let's put this on the RAID 0 one disk RAID 0, and I'll expand to available to use all the disk on that RAID group. Now hit OK. So here you see the LUNs I've created for this particular storage profile. Now hit OK. Once I do that, see over here the storage profile has been created. And here are the, all the local LUNs that are associated with that storage profile. Now let's go ahead and bring everything together and utilize this storage profile within a service profile. So going over here to the server drawer, I previously created a server pool called spool1, which includes all the S3260 server nodes from those 10 S3260 chassis that we saw before. So there's 20 S3260 server nodes ready to be consumed. I've also created a service profile template called SPST1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the storage profile from the previous step into the service profile template. So storage tab, storage profiles, modify storage profile. Going over here to the storage profile policy, I'm going to choose storage P1, which is our storage profile from before. And you can see the LUNs, boot, data 1, data 2, data 3, logs that we created within that storage profile. I hit OK here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create service profiles from the service profile template. When I do this, it'll automatically pull the servers out of the server pool, build the servers, and configure the storage automatically. So let's go ahead and create the service profiles from, start, from template. Let's call this S3260 demo. We have 20 of these because we have 20 servers. I'm going to hit OK. What you'll see automatically built over here is I went ahead and built 20 service profiles. Now these server pro profiles are in the process of being configured right now. Each one of these will be going through its configuration. If I look at the storage associated with this service profile, you'll see the LUNs associated with the storage profile are being built on these machines, on these physical boxes right now. So on the physical box, it's building a RAID 1, a RAID 10, a RAID 5, a RAID 0, and it's going to go ahead and create those LUNs that we created before within the storage profile on those disk constructs that are being built right now. So now that the storage has been built on all of the boxes, we have 20 servers that are available to have their operating systems installed. On these servers, you're going to have multiple RAID groups, multiple LUNs, managed by UCS Storage Profiles. The UCS S-Series 3260 platform paired with UCS Manager Storage Profiles combines the latest UCS technologies into a compelling, powerful, locally managed storage solution.